Welcome everyone to ESPN on ABC College Football presented by K Jewelers. This afternoon from Floyd Casey Stadium in Waco Texas the top 25 matchup as number 22 Texas and number 17 Baylor conclude their regular seasons. Mac Brown and the Texas Longhorns arrive in Waco at seven and four. They lost for the first time last season under Mac Brown to Baylor in Austin 30 to 22. Sean McDonough Matt Millen the White Prowls team today Matt trying to make it two wins in a row over Texas for the first time since 1991 and 92. As you take a good look right there Robert Griffin the third huge game for Baylor. Not only do they have an opportunity to to beat Texas for the second year in a row which they haven't been able to do for a long time. But there's a Heisman Trophy campaign going on right here and it's also Robert Griffin's opportunity to show the country that he is legit. Now he had a Heisman moment just a few weeks ago against Oklahoma on this field. He needs to finish it up strong here with a big show. It'll be more difficult for him today than it has been against some other opponents. Texas brings the best defense in the Big 12 to Waco. Texas won the toss and deferred. They'll get that defense on the field first. Justin Tucker will kick off for the Longhorns to Levi Norwood and Antoine Goodley. Lloyd Casey Stadium filled to capacity about 50,000 on hand on a warm and overcast day with off and on light drizzle and it's Goodley with an outstanding return. The kicker Tucker helped bring him down at the 41 yard line with help from A.J. White. 41 yard return for Goodley. An excellent field position with which to begin for the Baylor Bears one of the best offensive teams in the country averaging 576 yards of offense per game only Houston has been more prolific. The Bears the only team in the country averaging more than 300 yards passing and 200 yards rushing per game led by Robert Griffin the third fourth year junior could be his final game in this stadium for Baylor. Terrence Ganaway is the running back. Griffin faked it to him and throws incomplete intended for Kendall Wright and Quandre Diggs the true freshman had the coverage for the Longhorns. Now Sean a lot of people talk about Baylor they talk about Robert Griffin the third but Ganaway is an outstanding rusher and he has help in those receivers right there Kendall Wright's a big play receiver. Jared Salubi came in and running back Griffin fake to him goes deep right behind the defense touchdown Baylor well we told you that Kendall Wright had big plays all over him. And he does Sean just running through the coverage how you can lose a guy like that is beyond me. And if you're trying to make an impression on Heisman Trophy voters what a way to start 59 yard touchdown pass on the second play from scrimmage Robert Griffin the third to Kendall Wright 22 seconds into the game 35th touchdown pass of the season. For Griffin now leading the Big 12 all by himself. You see these two looks like they're going to bracket the slot. And and so what happens is he's going to Gideon is going to go inside now he's going to come back outside. And right there it's over. Because Kendall Wright just is a faster player than Blake Gideon. The key of course in the quarterback spot is where are your eyes when you move. And RG3 does it as good as anybody. His eyes were down the field he saw it right away and it was six quick. 29th career touchdown reception for Wright, the most prolific receiver in Baylor history. Griffin's 35 touchdown passes this year have averaged 36 yards per score. 23 of them now of 25 yards or more. That's the longest touchdown pass given up by Texas this year. The previous long was only 19 yards. DJ Monroe took a short kickoff from Ben Parks. And brought it out to the 29 yard line. Reggie Smith is the referee. There is a flag on the field. Oh, 
offside. Kicking team number 12. Five yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Pradarius Golston was offside for Baylor. We'll move the ball out to the 34 yard line. Texas offense led by Case McCoy. Much of the year, he and David Ash have shared playing time within game. For a while, Ash was the starter. Now McCoy is back. Three and one as the starter this year. A little bit better game manager at this point than Ash, the true freshman. A little less turnover prone. And those are the biggest reasons why Mac Brown has McCoy in there to start. He hasn't thrown an interception this year. They have lots of injuries at running back, so Cody Johnson, ordinarily a fullback, gets the start as the featured back today. He runs straight ahead. He's carried only 29 times this year, most of them in short yardage and goal line situations. Where they're without Fozzie Whitaker for the season, out with an injured knee, suffered in November at Missouri. Malcolm Brown and Joe Bergeron, two very talented true freshman running backs, also. Nursing injuries. Johnson again comes up about three yards short of a first down. Bergeron didn't even make the trip with a hamstring. Malcolm Brown is here in uniform, did warm up. He's troubled by a right knee and turf toe. Remains to be seen if he can give it a go. There's Whitaker. Lost for the rest of his career at Texas after knee surgery. But Sean, they're in third and under five, and that's where they wanted to be for this offense. Third down and three. Out of the gun, Case McCoy on target. First down, Mike Davis made a couple of defenders miss and got across midfield before Sam Hall, the starting strong safety, got him down. Gain of 12 and a first down for Texas. If you look at the balance sheet for this Texas offense, here's what you have. You have a solid offensive line, good, not great. You don't have a lot of big play people. They're out. You have a quarterback who sees the field quick and gets rid of the ball fast. So the short passing game is a big part of what they do. Therefore, they have to be able to win on first and second downs to be able to get in third and short so they can manage it. It's 108 now career pass attempts without an interception by Case McCoy, the most to start a career by a Texas quarterback. Johnson at 252 pounds, bowled his way down to the 44. The rain has started to intensify now. We've had light off and on rain through most of the day, but the forecast is for off and on showers, and they're noticeably heavier at the moment. Sean, this offense is antithetical completely to what happens with this Baylor team. Baylor lives on big plays. This Texas offense does not have a lot of big plays in it. They try to grind it out. Keep the offense on the field. McCoy throws again. Caught by Marquise Goodwin. Ordinarily number 84. He's wearing Fozzie Whitaker's number two. In tribute to his teammate who's lost for the season with a knee injury. Gain of five. Marquise Goodwin is one of the players that has big plays in him. The other guy who has a lot of big plays in him is number 26. DJ e. Monroe. He's got big time speed. Again, here we are. Third and short. This is what they need, Sean. They give it to Johnson. And he is stacked up to the line of scrimmage. Flags down. Ball comes out very late. The play had long since been blown dead, and there is a penalty flag. This was stopped. Fourth down. Yeah. Mac Brown thinks it was against the Baylor Bears. Line judge on the far side of the field through the flag. Defense number 11. Five yard penalty results in a first down. That's Terrence Lloyd was lined up offside. He lined up in the neutral zone. You're going to see him right up here. And he One was. of these things is different from the other. <laughs> Little bit trying to get a head start there. Well, this is what Mac Brown wanted. Ball control. Time consuming possession. They average more than 33 and a half minutes per game of possession time. That's seventh best in the nation. First and 10. Baylor leads 7 0. Johnson again. Just wondered, Matt, how much of the load he'll be able to carry 
He's a guy who's basically averaged two or three carries per game this year for Texas. Well, I think if they keep him inside, two things will happen. First of all, it will give that young, and I emphasize young, offensive line confidence. Any, any good offensive lineman, they want to be able to run the football. Because what it does, it just settles them in, and it gets them coming off the ball. It makes them more aggressive. That will help in the run game. There's a young line, including a true freshman left tackle, Josh Cochran. Second and eight with D.J. Monroe in the game. McCoy throws, caught. Good win again. First down. Bumped out of bounds by Mike Hicks. The starting free safety. 16-yard line, gain of 16. First down, Longhorns. Nice throw. He has to be able to beat right there. Six. Ahmad Dixon. Jim, Dixon had the right drop. He has to just have enough touch to be able to get it into Goodwin, and he does it perfectly. With a couple of catches for Goodwin. Junior from Garland, Texas. Outstanding track athlete, former NCAA long jump champion. Jeremy Hills now is in at running back. He's carried only 24 times this year. This is his 25th. And no gain, and a flag thrown into the pile. Rodney Chadwick made the tackle. 40. Offense, number 82. 10-yard penalty. Repeat second down. Luke Pellman, formerly a tackle, now moved out to tight end to try to give them a little more size of that position to help out in the running game. And Pellman and that offensive, he just, like you said, an ex-tackle, Sean, and they like to use him to be able to move the line of scrimmage. Now, I got to tell you, this Baylor defensive line, it's not like they're giving up a lot of ground. Right now, they're just pounding inside and gaining bits and pieces. McCoy throws the receiver. Mike Davis never really turned toward the ball. Sam Hall had coverage. McCoy upset. Looked like he got the coverage he wanted, but Mike Davis didn't read it the same way. Well, you got to be able to be see the same things. If you can't see, you can't play. Mike Davis missed that the corner was coming on the blitz. Obviously, McCoy saw it, got rid of the ball quickly. Live for another down. D.J. Monroe in at running back. McCoy now three out of four. That was his first miss. Five minutes gone by, 7-0 Baylor. They scored quickly. Texas is marching. Davis, couple of nifty moves, but nowhere near the first down. Got inside the 14-yard line, pulled down by Ahmad Dixon. Sophomore from Waco, who originally committed to the University of Texas, then changed his mind. He's got Third some, down. Yeah, he's got some good speed, Sean. And he's one of those guys who you can play in a slot. He's got some versatility to him. But lost in this. Now that play, third and a lot more manageable than it had been. Third down and eight. Tenth play of the drive for Texas. They bring pressure and did not get there, and the pass is incomplete. Intended for Jackson Shipley. Looked like he might have been tangled up with Sam Hall. No flag on the play, and the field goal unit comes on for Texas. Yeah, I'm anxious to watch this replay because it looked. To watch, you see Hall, 25, right here. And that Shipley, now once he comes out of this break, yes. yeah, that's what it looked like. See, the, he went down on the hip. Now, all you, all you young players out there, you never hold, but when you do, you go down low, stay down on the hips. Most of the time, it doesn't get called. There's one of the best kickers in the country, Justin Tucker, from 31 yards. And it is no good. Wide right. Just his third miss of the season. Now 16 out of 19. He was the hero on Thanksgiving night in College Station when he kicked the Field goal as time expired from 40 yards to beat Texas A&M. And that one was just wide right. Well, they did everything right, did Texas offensively. They, they got into third and manageable. They converted third downs. They ran the football like they wanted to establish. They just didn't finish the deal. And when you go against this Baylor offense, which has the big play capability, that's a scary deal. Held the ball for five and a half minutes. 11 plays, moved 52 yards, no points. First and 10, Baylor from the 20. 
Jared Salubi straight ahead near a first down. Looks like they're going to mark him shy of the 30. It'll be second and a yard. Kenny Vaccaro made the tackle. When you play against Baylor, you also have to defend pace. Griffin throws to Kendall Wright. And he has the first down with a two yard gain. Quandre Diggs, true freshman, made the tackle. Sean, I don't know if the country really knows about Kendall Wright. This is an extremely talented player, very strong, runs good routes, has very good speed. He's tough to cover one on one, particularly at the line of scrimmage. That's where he uses his strength well. Having the best season among receivers in the history of Baylor. Griffin couldn't find anybody. Got bumped out of bounds with a one yard gain by Emmanuel Acho, the leading tackler on the year for Texas. You watch this RG3. One of the things that he loves to do, a lot of times he's a half the field uh, quarterback, Sean. He'll get one half the field, and that's what they attack. He loves to roll to his right. So if you bring pressure, you bring it from the defensive Going left. deep again for Kendall Wright. Great adjustment to the ball. And another big completion. Griffin to right. They connected on a 59-yard touchdown on their first possession. This one's good for 48 to the Texas 20. One thing's pretty clear early. Philip Montgomery, the offensive coordinator for Baylor, is going after the Texas safeties, and he's going after them with right. And here's Ganaway with lots of running room. Touchdown! And we welcome those of you who just watched Southern Mississippi defeat Houston in the Conference USA Championship game here in Waco. Seven minutes in, the Baylor Bears lead Texas 14 to nothing. Baylor got the ball first on the second play from scrimmage. Scored on a long touchdown pass, 59 yards. Robert Griffin the third to Kendall Wright. Just 22 seconds into the ball game was 7-0. Texas had a long drive. 11 plays, held the ball more than five and a half minutes, but Justin Tucker, ordinarily terrific, missed a 31-yard field goal. And Baylor just got the ball back. A long pass, Griffin to right of 49 yards, got them down to the 20. And Terrence Ganaway took it in from 20 yards out. 80 yards in four plays. And Ganaway the touchdown to make it 14-0 Baylor. Didn't take long, did it, Sean? We talked about this Baylor team having big play capability, and they showcase it right off the start. Then Parks kicks off for Baylor into a pretty good win. Comes down to the 22 to D.J. White. And he got stopped immediately. And we welcome you to Waco, Floyd Casey Stadium sold out. Delighted to have you with us. Sean McDonough, along with Matt Millen, will be joined shortly by Samantha Steele. Big game here. Baylor trying to win its ninth game of the season. That would be a first since 1986. Trying to beat Texas back-to-back -back years for the first time since 91 and 92. But certainly the subplot, and it's a major subplot. Robert Griffin III, legitimate Heisman Trophy contender, needs to have a big day on national TV. He's off to a fantastic start. Yeah, he's out to the start that he wanted to have. And you know, there's been a lot of talk about Robert Griffin III, just exactly what he is and, and, and what exactly does he bring to the dance. And what he brings is all kinds of talent. He can beat you with his arm. He can beat you with his legs. The thing that's so impressive about him is that when he does decide to run, he always looks down the field. His big plays come off the fact that he keeps his eyes down the field and can make all the throws. He is as exciting as any player in this country. Less than midway through the first quarter, he's already thrown for 109 yards for Coach Art Riles. What a tremendous job he has done turning this program around at Baylor with considerable help from Robert Griffin III and other talented players including Terrence Ganaway and Kendall Wright. Wright's their all-time leading receiver. Ganaway is going to have the single season rushing mark with his performance this year over 1100 yards. 
leading the Big 12 in total rushing yards. Sean, I'll tell you how good Art Bryles is. That Houston team, a lot of that team is what Art Bryles brought in. So he's winning in two places. Not to take anything away from, come, from uh, Coach Sumlin. I think he's done a nice job. But Art Bryles is special good. 23 and 25, but the last two years, 15 and 9. This year, 8 and 3, ranked 17th in the BCS, highest in school history. So Texas had a good drive the first time they had the ball, missed the field goal. This is a bad start. They got a break on a personal foul penalty against Baylor to move it out to the 33. Full start, offense, number 89, five yard penalty, first down. Barrett Matthews, as you saw, flinched at the right end of the line. So first and 15 for Texas. When the Texas offense is on the field, it's the Texas weakness against the Baylor weakness. Longhorns a mediocre offensive team, and Baylor statistically one of the worst defenses in the country. Here's Marquise Goodwin. Well, he got rolled up well out of bounds. At the 36-yard line, Ahmad Dixon made the tackle. And it'll be second down and seven. You mentioned Ahmad Dixon. One of the, he was one of their top recruits that they brought in here. And one of the reasons was because he can really run. Now he is, that is, you're right, Sean, that is, that could have been a penalty right there. And he's almost all the way across the white sideline boundary into the team area. For those just joining us, significant injuries at running back for Texas. That's D.J. Monroe out of bounds, three yards short of a first down. Popped out by Sam Hall. There is a flag on the play and a preliminary indication it's against Texas. Holding offense number 78 10 yard penalty for Pete second down. Mac Brown's without Fozzie Whitaker injured in their game at Missouri in mid November and out for the year. His career at Texas is over Malcolm Brown did warm up before the game but he has a knee injury and turf toe on his right foot. Joe Bergeron fellow true freshman along with Brown. Did not make the trip with a hamstring. There's Whitaker. We haven't seen Brown yet. So Cody Johnson, ordinarily a fullback, has done the bulk of the ball carrying so far with help from Jeremy Hills and DJ Monroe. So, what Brian Harson has been trying to do is to use those receivers on quick throws. Here's Case McCoy through a wobbler, broken up. Batted down by Joe Williams. Sophomore from St. Louis, intended for Marquise Goodwin. One of the things, when you look at this Texas offense, that you know, they put themselves in a little bit of a box, Sean, because they don't really push the ball down the field. McCoy is most effective in the short to intermediate range. Occasionally, he'll throw in a nine route down the sideline just to kind of just to kind of stretch the field, but it's it's really not that effective because the bulk of it is short to intermediate. Third down and 15. They're only 96th in the country in passing offense. They don't even try to throw it. And the run yields a first down and much more. Jeremy Hills, the junior from Houston, Texas, trying to fill the void with all those injuries. Just his 26th carry of the year, good for 20 yards. Nice call by Brian Harson, the offensive coordinator. He just does it. He just catches them off guard. It's third down and long. So they get the brush up the field and then they're able to get their secondary blockers into the linebackers and safeties. Nicely done. Very poor tackling technique by John Moscarello the umpire <laughs> who did not wrap up on the play. Here's D.J. Monroe good blocking ahead of him and he gets eight on first down yanked down by Elliot Coffey the middle linebacker fifth year senior playing in his final home game at Floyd Casey Stadium. What a good year he's had, Elliot Coffey. Son of Ken Coffey, the old Washington Redskins. Good. He's in, every time you look up, he's in on a play. He's got pretty good instincts. He finds the football really well, and he does a nice job in pass coverage, which at the collegiate level, you don't see a lot of backers who has that kind of uh, that instinct in the pass game. Second down and two. Hills remains the running back. Ace McCoy faked it to him. He's throwing a deep ball. It's well covered and nearly intercepted. Intended for Jackson Shipley, but Joe Williams had a better shot at it. The throw from McCoy came up well short 
He is throwing with a pretty good breeze at his back here in the first quarter. And Sean, that's a great point you make. It is a breeze, and so your ball has to be able to Whoa. cut. And that thing was as nice a punt as you're going to see in the first half here. Shipley has, he's got the leverage to the top. Throw the ball over the top shoulder. That one did not happen. Not enough on it to be able to cut that air. You're surprised they took the deep shot. I mean, they're playing as ball control, keep moving the chains. You have to, but you have to somehow get this, this zone defenses. You have to stretch them a little bit vertically. Cody Johnson, the bulldozer, gets the first down. I'm liking Cody Johnson here early. And I'm liking the interior three. They're doing a nice job. Oh, Mason Walters, number 72, that right guard. Mason Walters is the one guy on that offensive line who's got a little bit of a mean streak. And when I watch this team, this is a, it's a nice, young, emphasized young offensive line. Walters got a little bit of a mean streak in him. And that needs to be contagious. The best thing you can have with an offensive line, Sean, is a bunch of guys who get a little ornery. And I think this is a nice group. Walters needs to spice that group up a little bit. They're a team that line relies much more heavily on the run than the pass. And here's a reverse. Marquise Goodwin in trouble and stopped for a loss. Loss of about two on the play, driven back by K.J. Morton. Well diagnosed by this defense of Baylor. Now, Phil Bennett is a defensive coordinator for this Baylor defense. And what you're seeing right now out of Texas is kind of falling into a pattern. They're going to use the big man inside, and they're going to pound, pound, pound with Cody Johnson. But in order to get to any edge and stretch that thing, they're using their exterior people. It's either Marquise Goodwin or they're using somebody who has speed, DJ Monroe, to get on the edge. Second and 12, McCoy out of the shotgun. Fake to Hills and through short to DJ Grant. His 12th catch of the year for the junior from Austin. Missed a couple of years with knee trouble. Seven yard gain. Gets it back into a more manageable third down and five. So Sean, if you are this Baylor defense, here's what you have to do against McCoy. You have to jump your coverage. You have to stay on them tight. Most of the throws are coming out quickly and they're underneath uh, throws. So anytime you're in a zone or in man, you've got to jump your coverage quick. Three receivers to the right. And McCoy rolled in that direction. He tries to scramble and laterals for a first down. A risky play, but it paid off for Case McCoy, who pitched it to Jeremy Hills for an eight-yard gain. They're four out of five now on third down. McCoy channels his inner farm. <laughs> that's, that's what this reminds me of. Great awareness. Just fantastic awareness, not only there on the backside, but Jeremy Hills has to have the same amount of awareness. First case is the younger brother of Texas legend Colt McCoy now in the NFL with the Cleveland Browns. Another 11 play drive. That's how many they had the first time they had it. Monroe did well to cross the line of scrimmage chased out by Mike Hicks. The junior safety second leading tackler only one shy of Elliott Coffey for the team lead coming in. Now if you're going to run inside and you're Cody Johnson the one guy you have to get blocked inside is number 90 Nicholas Jean Baptiste. And he's a big powerful man. And when Matt he's Brown in has sent David Ash into the ball game now. He is more of a running threat at quarterback. On second down and eight. Looked like they had a little trouble at the junction. Ash held on to it and got the first down. Rodney Chadwick stopped him. Let's see where they're going to spot that thing. And they might move it back. It was clearly beyond the yellow line originally. Now it looks like they're going to spot it just short of the first down. Yeah, that side judge, he, he stuck his foot down there and, and gave the mark, and it was short. No, it's third down and less than a yard. Two and a half minutes to go first quarter. True to form. Two quick strikes by Baylor. Two long drives by Texas. Johnson bowling his way down near the five yard line. He took Sam Hall and Mike Hicks, those excellent safeties, for a 12 yard ride. Watch the feet. That's the key. Great feet in the hole right there. Cody Johnson has the power. You know he's going to do that. But what you don't expect is right here, the decision. Man, that was nice. Had coffee 
He cleared it, bounced to the left. Texas four out of four on third down on this run heavy drive. Even without three of their top running backs, they're moving the ball on the ground. Johnson's moving the pile to the three yard line. And he's likely to keep carrying. He has 35 career rushing touchdowns. When they get down there close, they give it to him. They give it to him, which means they also give it to the O-line. Nicely done in there by Espinosa, the center. Walters inside, just getting a big push. And then here comes the battering ram behind him. Here comes David Ash, the true freshman quarterback, back in. Second and goal from the three. Ash down to the two tackled by Rodney Chadwick again the junior from Carthage Texas. This is a Baylor defense ranked 114th in the country in total defense only six in the country worse than that. They're 111 in scoring defense 37 points per game but Phil Bennett says lately when we've needed some big stops we've come up with them. McCoy back in at quarterback. Jamison Berryhill, the fullback in front of Cody Johnson. Power backfield for Texas. The fake. And it is oh, caught catch. but out of bounds. Blaine Irby. He thought he had it. The great the officials catch say on. no. One hander in the back of the end zone. You try to get to the back. There's the catch. Touchdown. Well, that will be reviewed. That will be reviewed, and they'll see the toe hits right there before anything else. And he has control all the way through. That is a big time catch, Irby. Jack McDonald is the replay official. We'll tell you what he had to say. When we come back to Waco, where Baylor leads Texas 14 to nothing. Welcome back to ESPN and ABC College Football, presented by K Jewelers. While we were away, the referee Reggie Smith announced upon the replay review it was a touchdown catch and a dandy by Blaine Irby. The senior from Camarillo, California's third of the year. He's had one in each of the last three games. Becoming much more of a factor here late in the year for Mac Brown in Texas. And now the extra point up and good by Justin Tucker. Lane Irby, who was out for almost three full calendar years after a devastating knee injury in 2008. They thought for a while that might be limb threatening. The injury was so severe. He's back in a big factor for Texas. Well, a lot of coaches will tell you time of possession doesn't mean very much. Texas is at the ball for 13 minutes, two seconds, and 26 plays to a minute 25 for Baylor and only seven plays run by the Bears. But Art Bryles and Baylor lead 14 to 7. Texas defensively they need to adjust their safety play. That's what they're attacking right now. The Baylor Bears. Good kickoff by Justin Tucker with the breeze. The Levi Norwood decided to run it out. The son of the associate head coach of the Baylor Bears Brian Norwood. Brought it to the 22. Taken down by DeMarco Cobbs. And a timeout in Baylor. Leading 14 to 7. The Baylor Bears a perfect six and oh at home this season eight and three overall leading Texas 14 to seven Texas Longhorn defense had given up only two touchdowns in the first quarter all year long one Oklahoma State the other by Texas A&M Robert Griffin the third and his mates put two on the board already just seven plays from scrimmage Terrence Ganaway. First two men couldn't get him down. Finally, it took three Longhorns to do the job. 
Very near the first down yardage at the 33 yard line. Quandre Diggs with help from Christian Scott and Emmanuel Acho. Terrence Ganaway, Sean, 240 pounds. You better bring your big boy pads when it comes time to tackle him. Griffin, the third, pressured and throws it away. You wonder how sore Ganaway will be today. Last week, in their win against Texas Tech at the Dallas Cowboys Stadium, Ganaway carried 42 times, a school record for 246 yards. Griffin was injured in the first half of that game, late in the second quarter, and did not play at all in the second half, so they were leaning heavily on the run in their win over the Red Raiders. Terrence Ganaway normally wears glasses, and they're about good Joe Paterno-style glasses. Pretty thick. There was contacts when he plays. Alex Okafor dropped Griffin for no gain. On the final play of the first quarter, true to form, Baylor a quick strike attack. Texas two long drives, and it's 14 to seven Baylor after one. Baylor leads 14 to seven to win today, and in a bowl game would give them 10 wins, matching the most they've ever had in a season. That's goal one, but very much on the minds of everybody here today. The Heisman Trophy candidacy of Robert Griffin III. Best player in the history of Baylor football in the opinion of many. And his candidacy on the minds of his adoring fans here in Waco. He acknowledged yesterday, he said, I have become the face of this university. And he carries that mantle very well. Trent Richardson of Alabama, Andrew Luck considered the other front runners at the moment. Neither of them play today, so Griffin has the stage to himself on national TV. And he threw for 109 yards in the first quarter, despite the fact he was barely on the field. Not yet on the air. Here's Samantha Steele. Guys, you'll remember from our meetings yesterday, Robert Griffin minimized the pressure that comes with trying to play for the Heisman today. He almost he also minimized the pressure that comes with playing when it's wet and rainy like it has been. It's been really off and on. It started out pretty dry. Now it's back picking up again. But also wind has been an issue all day. I asked him if he's played in the rain before. He said no, but his fiance Rebecca reminded him yes. Last year against Rice, he said it actually helps because it makes defenders miss. Well, the first punt of the day from either team from Spencer Ross, the Baylor wow. freshman. He bombed it a little too much. Into the end zone, a 64-yard punt. Wow. Mac Brown livid, and Dwayne Aquino is as well. And the reason why, there was a personal foul penalty called on that punt against Jamison Berryhill of Texas. So they're marching at half the distance of the goal back to the 10-yard line so instead of first and 10 from the 20. Max got a little blood going there on that left cheek. Yeah. Looks like he's gone out there and made a tackle or two. Wanted to tackle the official. Then had to help hold back Dwayne Aquino, a longtime member of the defensive coaching staff. It is first and ten. And Case McCoy with a flag down for a false start against the Longhorns. Their third one. Prior to the snap, false start. Offense, number 19. Five-yard penalty, first down. Lane Irby. Guilty of the penalty. Well, the team that sometimes struggles to move the football, you can't afford to inflict these kind of wounds to yourself. Six penalties already against Texas. First and 15. And more movement. Offside, defense, number 18, came into the neutral zone, causing an offensive lineman to full start. Five-yard penalty, first down. On Tevin Elliott, had a couple of costly personal foul penalties last week on the same drive against Texas Tech that helped the Red Raiders score a touchdown. So it's back to first and 10 after all these flags. Baylor penalized four times now. Cody Johnson is the running back. Play action pass for McCoy and nowhere to throw it. 
And he's just going to throw it away. They sent everybody deep. Didn't have an option short or intermediate. That's a two receiver route, Sean. They went max protection. And because of that, they had a lot of time. But the stutter by Shipley, it didn't do anything. They just waited on him. And then on the backside, the same thing. Marquise Goodwin, who has legitimate speed, that would have been your best shot. But Dixon takes care of it with a punctuation hit on McCoy. They wonder if Jackson Shipley's full speed. He missed three games with a knee. Injury returned last week at A&M. Second and ten. McCoy off his back foot has a receiver. First down, Mike Davis. And the ball looked like it was coming out. So in came Ahmad Dixon, but it's Texas ball and an 11-yard gain, first down. Mike Davis down below. He's just going to sit down in front of the coverage. It's his own, and he's sitting down in front. And he can do that, Sean. And they, they did look at the fumble at the end, but they said he was down. But right now, this Texas offensive line is winning the battle against Baylor. Lots of time to throw, and when they have run, They've created some nice push inside. They go back to the run with Jeremy Hills. And he slides out to the 27 yard line for a gain of six. K. Ron Johnson made the tackle for Baylor. 13 and a half to go, first half, 14 7. Baylor leading Texas. Barry Hill in at fullback, trying to lead the way for Hills, who bounced outside. There are flags down. The crowd roared as well. They thought it was a pretty obvious holding penalty against Texas, likely on the right tackle, Trey Hopkins. Holding. Offense, number 75. 10 yard penalty, repeat first down. Big Trey Hopkins, 300 pounder, just a sophomore. It wasn't so much a hold as much as it is a mauling. And since they don't have the penalty for mauling, they settled for holding. Seven Texas penalties. Five of them on offense. McCoy back from the line of scrimmage and pulled down by Nick Johnson. Junior from right here in Waco. Part of an eight man rotation among the four defensive linemen for Phil Bennett. One of the one of the areas you look at for an offensive line as you look at Phil Bennett their defensive coordinator is how well do you protect when there's you know it's going to be a pass. This particular situation right here. Third and long, it's a passing situation. How do you hold up now? Longhorn six out of seven on third down. McCoy goes deep and has his receiver. Shipley running well on that injured knee. Chopped down by Hicks at the two yard line. John, we said the gauge for the offensive line in passing situations. How do you perform? Here's your answer. It's a thing of beauty. And then Shipley, really well done, gets to the top of this route, back inside, finds the hole, and then I want you to watch the effort defensively. Never quits on it. Here he comes, all the way to the top. Hicks does a great job of not quitting and sets up this first and goal. 78 yards. First and goal from the three. Johnson inside the two. Elliott Coffey made the tackle. That was the longest pass play of the season for Texas. And Longhorn fans familiar with that combination. McCoy to Shipley, their two older brothers starred at the University of Texas. And now the brothers trying to follow in their footsteps. 
Another Texas legend on the sideline, Roger Clemens here today in Waco. I think Roger would have liked to have been a linebacker on this Longhorn team. Hills now the running back. McCoy wants to throw as a receiver. Wide open, touchdown, Luke Pellman. His first catch of the season, good for a touchdown, and they're an extra point away from a tie. Oh, Pellman looked like an old tackle that time, didn't he, Sean? You can see him on the left side right here. So they're going to draw all your defenders this way. All the eyes go this way, all the bodies go this way, but the ball, it goes the other way, and Pellman is the recipient. Justin Tucker will try to tie it. And despite the hiccups at the start with the penalties, the Longhorns, who have struggled this year to sustain offense, able to do it today against one of the weakest defensive teams in the country. McCoy to Shipley. The familiar ring got them down inside the five. And then Pellman not long ago moved from tackle to tight end. Scores to the delight of Longhorn Nation. Back in rainy Waco. Time to take a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Texas and Baylor tied at 14. Texas with 239 yards already. Three long scoring drives, two resulted in a touchdown, one in a short missed field goal. The key's been their third down conversions to keep those drives alive. Seven out of eight, they've dominated the time of possession. That third down conversion, Sean, you are dead on. That is a huge deal for Texas, and they need to continue it this game. Justin Tucker kicks off, senior from Austin. Down to Antoine Goodley. And he's pulled down at the 24-yard line by Steve Edmond. Here's today's Aflac. <laughs> Trivia question. When is the highest of Baylor players ever finished in Heisman Trophy voting? Of course, topical with all the focus on Robert Griffin III. Likely to be at least on his way to New York for the Heisman Trophy Awards ceremony. Hoping to enhance his candidacy today. Most believe he's in a battle with Andrew Luck of Stanford and Trent Richardson of Alabama, neither of whom play this weekend. Terrence Ganaway on first and ten, ahead for four. Keiston Randall made the tackle. Robert Griffin III told us yesterday he avoids the hype by just focusing on the task at hand at every moment, every play in practice, every play in the game. Under duress here, got it off, caught by Lanier Sampson. He is a first down. And exchange pleasantries with Adrian Phillips. First down, Baylor out to the 38-yard line. When we talk about escapability, just to be able to continue to play and just continue it and then make a play after you're able to continue it. That's what he does so well. 120 yards passing now for Griffin. The first 109 went to Kendall Wright. Then that 11 to Sampson. Now Ganaway flagged down for a face mask. Manuel Acho with help from Keenan Robinson. I think every official on the field saw that one. It's a <laughs> flagathon. You might say it was flagrant. <laughs> I'm glad you said Personal it. Personal foul. <laughs> Face mask. Defense number two. 15 yard penalty. Automatic first down. Well, they called it on Robinson, but it was clearly Acho, and you saw Acho pointing at himself. And that was my bad. One of the leaders of this Texas defense that has been outstanding this year, leading the Big 12. In total defense, 75 yards per game better than any other defense in the conference. Griffin got smushed as he threw, and it's incomplete. I'm surprised on that smushing that they didn't throw a flag because he went up in his face, and that was Calvin Howell in the smush, little smushage. Watch how he jumps up, grabs him around the neck, and gets up high around the head. I'm surprised they didn't call it, Sean. 
Adrian Phillips broke it up in the back end. Quick tempo for Griffin. He says that's how we're going to beat this excellent defense, but they were ready to go. And Calvin Howell made the play. It was a gain for Griffin just across the line of scrimmage to the 41 yard line. It'll be third down and nine. Well covered down the field. And here's the other thing that impresses me about Griffin his toughness. And he gets that throw off. Incomplete. Crowd wanted a flag. Art Bryles wanted one too. He's out on the field. Hollering at the official in the secondary. But there is no flag as the rain comes down heavier now. Carrington bind him actually falls and then he trips. They just that's a good call by good non call by the officials. Well it's fourth down and nine and right now the punting team is not on the field. Looks like Baylor's going to go for it. And he might punt. He's further back than he ordinarily would be. So RG3 punts. And he's done that three times this year now. Baylor has punted fewer than any team in the country. 30 punts this year, two less than Army. 28 yard punt there for Griffin the third. The Waco suspension bridge that crossed the Brazos River here in Waco prior to its construction. The only way to cross that river was by a ferry. When it was built, it was the longest single span suspension bridge in the world, 475 feet. So Texas got behind 14 and nothing early on a couple of quick strikes by Baylor. Longhorns missed the field goal between those two scores, but they've weathered that storm. And now they possess it. And who possesses the ball? Is it Mike Davis? Yes. It's high. When it's a held ball, it goes to the offense. Davis and K.J. Morton, simultaneous possession there. And it looks like they're going to give it to Texas. Well, this is really, really well done by Davis because he just keeps fighting for it. And it's anybody's ball at that point. And like you said, Sean, it goes to the offensive player. Four catches today for Davis, a team high 44 for the year. He's been bothered by a strained hip flexor the last few weeks. Had only one catch in their win at Texas A&M on Thanksgiving. Jeremy Hills, the running back. Perhaps a yard, and that's it. Driven back by Terrence Lloyd, one defensive end. The other starting defensive end, Tevin Elliott, has been injured. Sam? At least the rest of the first half. He's got a knee injury. It's that right knee on the outside. He's icing it right now. His defensive coordinator, Phil Bennett, came up to him. He said, hey, man, are you hurt? He said, yes, I did confirm it with the athletic training staff. He will not be in for at least the rest of the first half. Gary Mason Jr. in there in his place. And Mason Jr. started a lot of the year. Hadn't been making many plays. And Phil Bennett told him, if you don't make plays, you're not going to play. He's playing out of necessity now. McCoy throws caught. Good one off to the races. You ain't catching him. With his world class speed, you can't forget about it. Texas leads for the first time today. Where did this come from from the Longhorns? Ordinarily a grinded out offense. They had a 78 yard pass to set up the last touchdown. This is 80 to go the distance. This is a great throw. Not a good throw, a great throw by McCoy. He had to get over the linebackers in front of the safeties. And then like you said, Sean, once Goodwin has any kind of space, it's over. There's nobody on this field who can catch him, except maybe the quarterback on the other side. Case McCoy hadn't thrown for more than 200 yards all year as you see 232 midway through the second quarter the extra point up and good by Justin Tucker. What of a turn of events here in Waco from 14 nothing down to seven up for McCoy and the Longhorns. Eighty yard touchdown the longest pass of Case McCoy's career. Longest reception of Marquise Goodwin's career. And Texas leads 21 to 14. This is the area in a cover two you want to attack. This is Hall. He's going to slip. This is Goodwin. He's going to attack inside. And this level right here, the threes, are the linebackers. And they do not get enough depth. And there is the area to attack. Now the throw is perfect. Hall slips. 
It allows him to get half a step. And Sean, you don't need you don't need any steps with Goodwin. He's going to create his own separation. Justin Tucker kicks off into the breeze. Levi Norwood for Baylor. And pulled down from behind by DeMarco Cops. Time to answer today's Aflac trivia question. Aflac! The highest a Baylor player has ever finished in Heisman Trophy voting. I had absolutely no idea. I'm with you. The only guys I can think of it is later is, and I maybe, maybe Walter Abercrombie at the time. Probably not, but maybe. It is that man, Don Troll. Southwest Conference MVP back in 1963, finished fourth in the balloting. Roger Staubach of Navy won it that year. Here's some trickery. The toss to Kendall Wright gets away from Gideon, who's had a bad tackling day. And it's a big gainer for Baylor to the 41-yard line. 29 yards on the run by Kendall Wright. And you wonder if there's something wrong with Gideon. He just doesn't want to wrap anybody up, it seems. Well, what was wrong was he gave Wright a two-way go. And as a safety, what you have to do is take something away and then defend the other thing. So you've got to get position. It's about angles. He didn't have them. Ganaway for a couple. On Ganaway's 20-yard touchdown run, Gideon didn't try to wrap him up at around the two-yard line. And then the way he went after right there, you wonder if he has some sort of shoulder injury. Sean, I'm going to tell you one of the hardest things in all of football to do as a safety is when you have to drop down on a moving guy and he has a two-way go on you. Here it comes again. Ganaway. That time Gideon did try to wrap him and got some help on the tackle from Keenan Robinson. So here comes the big play. Baylor attack trying to tie the game. Here comes Ganaway out the side. Now you can see Gideon. He's got to see at that time he squared him up because he had two defenders squeezing him. He became the lane player. Texas had too many men on the field. I believe they tried to call the timeout, but uh, there's a flag probably for illegal substitution. Illegal substitution, defense number 99, five yard penalty, first down. Now, if you're home and you're wondering why it's illegal substitution, Art Bryles, they did not substitute and if the offense doesn't substitute then it's completely incumbent upon the defense to get on and off before the snap if in fact the offense does substitute then the defense is allowed by the referees to be able to make the substitution and generally they give you about three seconds to decide if you want to substitute and begin that process then it's play on Ganaway who has set the single season Baylor rushing record today set by Jay Finley last year Ganaway has broken that now. He's over 1,200 yards and counting. Single season rushing record, 1,261 for Ganaway. Second and three, Griffin looking for blocks, and he's pulled down by Keenan Robinson, another of the Longhorns wearing Fozzie Whitaker's number two today as a tribute to their injured teammate. What a burst. Keenan Robinson came from inside out like he was shot out of a cannon. Keep in mind, he's... He's tracking down a world-class sprinter. Keenan Robinson shows some very good Fozzie Whitaker type speed there. And he's playing hurt as well with a thumb injury. The bone actually came through the skin in the game at Missouri. And Robinson's been playing with a soft cast ever since. Third down and six. Big play here for Baylor. Looking for the tying touchdown. Griffin takes off, doesn't get the first down. Blake Gideon did make the tackle in his 51st career start. Gideon now a senior out of Leander, Texas, has started every game of his Longhorn career. This is what you normally don't see, not to disparage track athletes, but this is the football player who happens to run. Normally you get those track guys, they don't necessarily show the greatest toughness. This guy does. They're going to go for it on fourth and two. Keep it in his hands or give him the option. Turning down the chip shot field goal to try to tie the game right here with under five to go. They'll look to the sideline. It looks like it's going to be a timeout. When you defend RG3, anytime he declares himself as a runner, you have to beat him to a pulp. Pulp, I said. Yeah, yes, you heard I it. heard that. Oh, pulpish. <laughs> Well, after the timeout, it appears Art Bryles is going to have Aaron Jones kick a field goal. He's had a shaky year, just 50%, but he's been better lately. 
This is little more than an extra point. 22 yard field goal right in the middle of the field. And it does say that Art Bryles is thinking more about winning the game than the Heisman Trophy for Robert Griffin, because if that was the case, you'd have him run it or throw it. <laughs> exactly right. And try to pad the stats in addition to trying to tie the game. Kick is good. 439 to go in the second quarter. 21-17 Texas. And Sean, of course, his stats be a little bit better had he not gonna knock silly last week against Texas Tech. Yeah. Well, one of the things that's impressive with him, though, is he's not afraid to take a look at him. And he, he'll get right back up. And he, again, he keeps his eyes down the field, which is rare for a guy who can use his feet to, to make big plays. But he'll keep taking hits, and he keeps on getting up every time. It's, it's been impressive. He was wobbly at the end of that first half. The first hit you saw in that package was the hit against Texas Tech that knocked him out of the game. He actually went back in the game, scored on a short touchdown run, but then did not appear thereafter. He said he could have gone back in the second half, but the coaches didn't want to chance it. And Baylor was leading through most of it. He said once it got to about a 10-point game, though, he was thinking about trying to fight people to get back into the game. Here's D.J. Monroe. Out near the 40 yard line. Nice return by DJ Monroe. Jeremy Hill's the running back behind Case McCoy, who's already thrown for a career high 232 yards in less than a half. Good win. A five yard gain. Actually, they're going to mark it at the 44. Good for four. The previous high in a game passing for Case McCoy was 168 in their win at UCLA. He's at 232 already. Mac Brown told us, Matt, he's starting to mature, come along, and starting to look a little more like his brother. You know, week which to is week. good news for, for Texas Longhorn fans. And the thing to remember is this is just a young guy, and he's physically not completely matured. He'll continue to get better and get stronger as the years go by. Empty backfield as he goes out of the gun. And he's under pressure and sacked. Back inside the 40-yard line, Nicholas Jean-Baptiste and Tracy Robertson. Big happy Nick Jean-Baptiste in there. Says he plays, big happy plays best when he's mad. You know, three weeks ago, we came in here right before the Oklahoma game, and Jean-Baptiste did not play well. As you can see what Art Bryles has to say there. But they benched him. And made and, him mad. And it really did. And he came against Oklahoma and had a game for the ages. Oh, he wasn't ready for the snap. And McCoy did not squeeze it. The ball squirted out. Baylor ball. Dominic Espinosa snapped it and startled McCoy. And a takeaway for Phil Bennett's defense with help and plenty of it from the horns. He wasn't looking. He's looking outside. Eyes are going this way. Ball's coming this way. Hit yeah, him on the head, but it squirted away. Well, Phil Bennett knows his defense is going to give up some big plays. It has already today, but he emphasized that they need takeaways. And they've been getting them lately. Griffin throws, caught. Wobbly throw on the rollout. Kendall Wright the catch. Texas came into the ball game dead even for the year in turnover margin, but much better than a year ago when they had their only losing season under Mac Brown at five and seven. And minus seven last year. Danaway, 4-2 to the 21. If I were playing against Robert Griffin III and I was going to bring pressure, Sean, I would bring it off my defensive left side. He likes to escape to his right. Not that he can't throw to his left, but he's more comfortable doing it to the right side. He faked again away and went ahead for two to the 19-yard line, tackled by Alex Okafor, who's played like an all-conference player the last four or five weeks. It'll be third down and seven. Big down for the Texas Longhorn defense to be able to take over and change of possession and hold him to at least a field goal here would be a monster. Manny Diaz done an excellent job in his first year as defensive coordinator in Austin. 
Out of the gun. Griffin flush to his right. Throws intercepted by Blake Gideon. First interception thrown at home this season by Robert Griffin III. And ironically, he rolls to his right. And he has what he wants in the back of the end zone, but this is just a poor throw. He's not, he doesn't get it down the field where he wants to. Here comes the pressure, bails to his right, which is what he likes to do, throwing on the run. Gideon cuts it off. He had right sliding, but Gideon makes the play. His second interception of the year, just the sixth thrown this year by Robert Griffin III, the first at home in 216 pass attempts at Floyd Casey Stadium. So they exchange turnovers, these two teams. Here's Jeremy Hills, tackled by Elliott Coffey, who's trying to rip it away. The time now a big factor. Minute 50 in the half, and the clock is running, and all three timeouts left for McCoy and the Horns. I'll show you a little something. Whenever these teams start to go to the hurry up, one of the things that the ball carry, whoever ends up with the ball, they hand it to the official. So they're not having to chase the football. They can spot it quick. Therefore, it speeds up the pace that they can go by. See how Texas plays it ordinarily pretty close to the vest, but they've been a little more wide open today, and that ball was almost intercepted. They were trying to set up a screen to Hills, and Rodney Chadwick appeared to see that coming. He came charging into the play. Yeah, he read it right away. Chadwick is in man coverage, and so he jumped his coverage. As soon as he saw the defenders, I mean, the offensive linemen start to come out, he hit his coverage. Well done. Third and four, Texas. Horns at their own 26-yard line. McCoy out of the pistol. Throws, intercepted. K.J. Martin out of bounds at the two-yard line. Martin read it like a book, Sean. He waited on it. They were just going to go to the sticks, and he knew exactly what he was getting. Really well done up top. Watch, eyes are back inside. Right there, he knows exactly what it is, and it's a break in the ball as it's being thrown. Extremely well played. Mike Davis is going to break out. As soon as he makes his break, Morton knows what it is. He's going to the sticks. You defend the sticks. Third interception of the year for the sophomore from Warner Robins, Georgia, K.J. Morton. Phil Bennett said... We give up some big plays. We need to get takeaways. They have two in the last two possessions for Texas. First interception thrown by Case McCoy in his career. Now for the lead. It is Ganaway stopped short of the goal line. Ashton Dorsey made the tackle. Just inside the two. Boy had not thrown an interception. That was his 125th career pass before an interception. Here's Griffin. Touchdown. Gideon saying, I have the ball, but the officials had already signaled that Griffin had broken the plane for the go-ahead score for the Baylor Bears. Sean, they went unbalanced. And Texas never really adjusted. You can see right there, Acho is calling for people to come over. They took the tackle, sent him to the right side, had the short corner to the left. And you can see as they're moving at the end, they don't get there in time. And RG3 crosses a plane for six. His eighth rushing touchdown of the season. Extra point good by Aaron Jones. Ten unanswered points for Baylor. Less than a minute to go in the half. The Bears by three. Tonight at 8 Eastern on ESPN, a conference title and a berth in the Discover Orange Bowl are on the line as Virginia Tech looks to avenge its only loss of the season when the Hokies take on Clemson. The Dr. Pepper ACC Championship game, part of Dr. Pepper Championship Week on ESPN tonight at 8 Eastern. You can also watch on ESPN 3. Aaron Jones kicks off, squib kick. 
Watched for a moment by DJ Monroe. And he came up just shy of the 20-yard line. Let's go back and take a look at the go-ahead score for Baylor. Cyril Richardson right there. That's the tackle. He comes over. Now, Emmanuel Acho, he recognizes that it's unbalanced, and he tries to get everybody. Look over here. You got a cluster going on over here. Now you need them to shift. He feels it. Can't quite get it done. The numbers favor the offense. RG3 wins. Personal foul. Unnecessary roughness. Receiving team. Number 42. Half the distance to the goal. First down. Second of those in the kicking game against Mac Brown, who has a sarcastic smile for the officiating crew. Tevin Jackson called for this one. Earlier it was Jamison Berryhill. They got Mac riled up. Looked like he cut his face when he argued the first one. But we wondered how they'd play it the last time. Would they be conservative? Yeah. Play it close to the vest with the lead. They were not. They threw a pass that was picked off. You'd have to think now. Backed up inside the 10. They'll be very careful. Mack wants a timeout. His team has committed 10 penalties against the number 17 team in the country in a half and still down by just three. And Matt said during the week, Matt, we cannot win a shootout against Baylor. I mean, he wanted the score to be under 30 points if it was at all possible. Baylor's been held only 30 points or less twice all year in 11 games, but in the first half, we do have a shootout. Do you think Texas could win a game if it continues to go like this? Well, I mean, the history would say no, because they haven't been able to do that consistently. But today, if today's any kind of indicator for the young quarterback, McCoy, it's a good sign because he's made some really nice throws, particularly in that mid-level on top of the, of the linebackers in front of the safeties. That's where they've been attacking, and he's done it well. And then I think the other thing is defensively, they've kind of cinched themselves back into this thing. All those penalties, however, have made Coach Mac Brown bleeding mad. Cody Johnson, the running back. Texas playing today without its top three running backs for the season. Chris Whitaker's been out for almost a month. Malcolm Brown tried to give it a go today, has not so far. He did warm up, is in uniform. Joe Bergeron did not make the trip, so it's been Johnson ordinarily, a fullback, getting the bulk of the carries. Baylor's calling timeout. The problem for them is they can stop it only once more. They're not likely to get it back unless Texas turns it over. And here's a look at today's quarterback comparison. McCoy in and out of the lineup. Griffin, the Heisman Trophy candidate, but McCoy's had the better of it today. Yeah, he's played well. He's made good decisions. Now, he does not bring to the table what Robert Griffin III does. I mean, let's make that perfectly clear. However, having said that, each game is its own separate fingerprint. And you have your opportunity to be able to define what it is that you are. Today, he's defined himself early as playing extremely well. Raining harder than it has all day right now. All security. Critically important for Johnson. He rumbles for a first down. A.J. Morton chopped him down. 11-yard run. I think it's. I think Cody Johnson has showed himself very well here, and he's the type of runner. As we watch this clock tip that tick down, if they can maintain this as this game goes on, he will get better because he's a big, powerful man, and that offensive line has done a nice job has done a nice job of coming off the ball. Generally, when you see that happen early in games, at the end of games, they start wearing out the defense. What they lose, obviously, is he's not really a home run threat. No, he's not. And that's why they've been using Marquise Goodwin at times and DJ Monroe at times to try to get that speed for big plays. Very entertaining first half between these two longtime rivals separated by only 90 miles. Robert Griffin the third, 161 yards passing. Most of that very early. Threw a touchdown, threw an interception, his first at home this year. And Ben Parks will kick off for Baylor. 
Breeze at his back. Quandre Diggs and DJ Monroe back deep. The kick gets help from the win, and it's Muff. Goes through the back of the end zone after he went through the hands of DJ Monroe. Here's a look at our Pacific Life game summary. Robert Griffin the third came out firing. They scored two very quick touchdowns on their first two possessions, including a 59 yard pass to Kendall Wright. Griffin has run one in today, but he's rushed for just nine yards. In case McCoy a career day, his career high was 168 yards for a game against UCLA at 232 in the half and three touchdowns. He had two long passes of 78 yards and 80 yards. The 80 yarder to Marquise Goodwin went for a touchdown. Ace McCoy, the toss to DJ Monroe. One man to beat. And he couldn't get away from Ahmad Dixon. But it's a huge gain, and all of a sudden the Horns have become a big play offense today. That's good for 51 yards. Well, you heard head coach Mac Brown say we lost the momentum at the half when he was talking to Samantha Steele at the half. This is the way you get it back. It's not with the big power inside of Cody Johnson. It's DJ Monroe's speed to the edge. Short-handed at running back without Malcolm Brown, Fozzie Whitaker, and Joe Bergeron. They're calling upon players to perform roles, and they're doing it very well. Hills the ball carrier there for a yard. Here's Samantha Steele. Yeah, I got the chance to catch up with Art Riles. Started pouring as soon as we started talking. He said, if it keeps up like this, we will run the ball more. Defensively, Tevin Elliott is out for the rest of the game. And I asked him on offense if they would continue to pick on those safeties even after Blake Gideon got the pick. He said, yes, we will. <laughs> Way to go, Sam, I am. Texas has had only two plays all season long in the passing game over 50 yards and only two rushes over 50 yards. But three plays today over 50 yards. David Ash back in. And he gets them to third down and two. Sam Hall made the tackle. Well, they want, they, they have a problem with the running game, obviously, because they don't have a consistent runner. And so the way they've been attacking this run game is a variety of ways. One of them is Ash. It gives them an option when he can ride that thing and make a read. You, you make the, de the defense make the decision, and then you do the opposite. And they brought Brian Harson in to be the offensive coordinator to bring some creativity, and he's done that. And a bad throw, and it's an incomplete forward pass. Baylor defenders alert that it might be ruled a lateral, but it was incomplete, intended for Jackson Shipley, and that was a promising play for Texas. Had it been completed, fourth down, a short three. And Mac Brown sends Tucker out. That was a wasted opportunity, Sean. You were right. It was a nice call because the coverage was backed off. He had an opportunity to pick up that first, just a poor through throw by uh, McCoy. Shocking miss for Tucker. It's usually a chip shot for him early in the game. Missed a 31 yarder by just a foot or so. This one from 39 is true to form. So less than two minutes into the third quarter, Texas and Baylor are now tied at 24. Sean McDonough, Matt Millen, Samantha Steele back in Waco, Texas. Some young fans enjoying use of the practice field adjacent to Floyd Casey Stadium. Many of them wondering where these two teams will go bowling. You can get ready for the bowl season with the ESPN Bowl Bound app featuring video news analysis and the latest BCS standings and weekly projections. ESPN's Bowl Bound app free on iPhone and Android. Text Bowl to 43776 to download. Justin Tucker's kickoff downloaded to Levi Norwood. And he gets driven back. Outstanding tackle by Jordan Hicks. Here comes Baylor on offense for the first time here in the second half. Quiet half for RG3. 161 yards is a pretty good number, but it wasn't on the field much with that big edge and time of possession for Texas. That's what Texas wanted to do. They wanted to keep him on the sideline. That's part of good defense. And then when they had an opportunity to be able, when he declares himself as a runner, you got to whack him. And they, they did that. They haven't they won can... nine games in a season since 86. Today would be their ninth. The school record is 10 
back in 1980 said by Grant Taft Southwest Conference Championship team a win today and in a bowl game they'd match the school record shovel pass Terrence Ganaway dragging Keenan Robinson across the 30 and these two are kind of jockeying for position in the Big 12 Bowl pecking order right now likely landing spots look to be the Insight Bowl in the Phoenix area the Holiday Bowl perhaps maybe the Alamo Bowl Griffin throws a dart Kendall Wright out to the 46 yard line again Keenan Robinson there 16 yard completion high low concept Wright is going to get on top of one defender in front of the other if the corner sinks he throws underneath if he bites he throws over the top he reads it perfectly well thrown ball and another first down six catches for 166 yards and a score for Kendall Wright their all time leading receiver now 295 career catches fake to Ganaway and another throw to the right this time to Terrence Williams he's to the 35 of Texas and another first down Blake Gideon made the tackle 19 yards on the pickup one of the things you notice with this Baylor offense is they'll just stay to one side the whole time half the field guy is what they want their quarterback to do and read and he reads it well Griffin's pass caught Lanier Sampson well he's spreading it around they have three receivers now with over 800 yards receiving for this season they never had more than one 800 yard receiver in a single season in school history prior to this year and they have three of them and they have a big hole for Gataway pulled down by Gideon I like that Sean at the end of that play that was man on man and Gideon stepped to the plate remember as a safety your job is you can't let anybody get past you and even if you get run over you got to get them down Gideon took on all 240 pounds first and goal from the one touchdown impressive drive by Baylor to recapture the lead Successive gains of 16, 19, 19, and 15 got them to the one. And then it was cashed in by Ganaway. If you're sitting at home and you're wondering why they don't match up man to man, the answer is Robert Griffin III. Extra point good by Aaron Jones. Back and forth they go in Waco, Texas. Now 31 24 for the Baylor Bears. Well, located right here in Waco, the Texas Sports Hall of Fame nonprofit education museum, established to celebrate and preserve the sports history of this great state. I have to think Robert Griffin III will be featured there someday. It's Right as you drive into the football building at Baylor University, Ben Parks kicks off. Each team has scored here in the third quarter. A field goal by Texas answered with a touchdown by Baylor. A.J. White brought the kickoff back. They have three players wearing number two today, including White, who usually does wear it. Here's the BCS standings. Brought to you by Allstate. There's a penalty, by the way, on Baylor for being offside on the kickoff. LSU, number one in the BCS standings. Most believe that even if they lose that game that they trailed George right now in the SEC championship, they, they'll still play Alabama for the national championship. But it'll be interesting if it happens yes, to see what happens. And then to see what happens with Oklahoma State and Oklahoma if Oklahoma State has a dominating win which is going to be tough. That's going to I, that's that's going to be a very good game uh, tonight on ABC Bedlam in Stillwater. Case McCoy after the play action fake dumped it off for of Ryan Robertson. Out of bounds at the 49 five yard gain. He took down Phil Bennett. The birthday boy defensive coordinator right. for Art Bryles. Art Bryles and Phil Bennett are both 
celebrating their birthday today and they were born on the exact same day December 3rd 1955 so happy birthday to Bryles and Bennett Bennett from East Texas Bryles from West Texas and they met here in Central Texas at Baylor DJ Monroe carries into Bayer territory so at the 47 yard line will be third and one I mean what are the odds of that well, he'd be born on the exact same day, yeah. and it's also Elliot Coffey's birthday. He's considerably younger than his two coaches. Of course, Phil Bennett claims that he's 30 minutes older. Now, how he knows that, I, I have no idea, but he's claiming it because he's going to be the older brother. Coach Browse and Bennett, unfortunately, also share in common. They both had to overcome unspeakable tragedy in their lives. We'll tell you about that in a moment. On third down and one, Cody Johnson powers down for a first down to the 42. And Art Bryles was playing at the University of Houston, 20 years old. His parents were killed in an automobile accident as they drove to Dallas to watch him play in a game against SMU. His dad was a high school coach, a great influence on Art Bryles. And Phil Bennett, many know the story, lost his wife many years ago when she went out for a jog and was struck and killed by lightning. And two of the all time good guys that you want to meet. When they talk to their players about dealing with what life can bring you, they speak from the heart. And unfortunately, with some tragic circumstances in their past. Marquise Goodwin. Short gain read well by Phil Bennett's defense. 41 yard line, a gain of one. What they've been able to do, and we talked about it early in the game. Offensively, Texas has been able to get into third and manageable. That's less than five yards. They've been able to do a good job. And then, Sean, like you pointed out at the half, they've been able to convert on third downs. Eight out of 11 at the half. They need to get to that and, and use that same kind of type of number here in the second half. On second down and out of the pistol, this will stop the play. Another false start. Against Texas. Full start. Offense. Number 68. Five yard penalty. Second down. It's amazing, Matt. They're shaping up to have what really looks like their best offensive day of the year, given all these penalties. 95 yards in penalties today. You know, it's kind of there's two things that are juxtaposed here in this in this game. One. They were, they were spotted down 14 and they came back. That shows that the coaching staff has been able to keep that group together. And then the part that doesn't make sense is all the penalties. That usually means poor, you know, not, not very good coaching. Good tackle by Rodney Chadwick as he rode Jeremy Hills to the ground after a one yard gain at the 45. They need to get inside the 33 yard line for a first down on third and 12. Big down right here for Baylor. Big down for Texas. <laughs> Got to maintain some of that momentum that they came out of the third quarter with on this down. Just a three man rush. McCoy throws, intercepted. Sam Hall picks up blockers. One blocker knocked down two, including McCoy. And he's all the way now to the 10-yard line. Ball just took off on him, Sean. It's the same route to the other side. They're trying to get to the middle of the field. Again, trying to throw over the backers. This time, because of the position, it takes off a little bit. And Hall, you'll see 25 up here in the top, right up here. He makes the play. See, the backer kicks underneath him. That's Chadwick. And then that forces the ball a little higher. Now watch, watch the transition. Oh, nice job. Two guys taken out right there by Mike Hicks, the safety. And they knock down Cochran and McCoy. Well, Baylor, which led 14 to nothing, poised to go up by two touchdowns again after the interception by Hall. Second of the year for the sophomore from Katy, Texas. McCoy had never thrown an interception in a college game until today. 
He's thrown two and been responsible for all three turnovers. Wasn't ready for a shotgun snap that resulted in a fumble for the third Texas turnover. Midway through the third quarter, Griffin keeps. Touchdown! Defend the option, you gain another man because you don't account for the quarterback. The extra point, good. And the lead is 14 again. Second rushing touchdown of the day for Griffin came just two plays after the interception by Sam Hall, 38-24, Baylor midway through the third. Richard Hawksworth, a free law history major from Waco. It's 38-24 in favor of Baylor. Sam Hall, an interception, 59-yard return to get them in close. Yeah, you're gonna watch inside, Sean. These two have these two right here. And then this guy's gonna come across. You're gonna influence this man with the fake and then you're gonna pull. Now his eyes, the quarterback's eyes, stay inside. Watch, right there. As soon as he sees the influence, you hit the gap, six. Kickoff by Ben Parks goes out of bounds. There's a flag down for the kickoff out of bounds. No other flags. Kickoff out of bounds for the kicking team. The ball, ball will be placed at the 40-yard line, first down. Well, tonight at 8 on ESPN, the conference title in the ACC and a berth in the Discover Orange Bowl on the line. Virginia Tech trying to avenge its only loss of the season when they take on Clemson, and they were defeated soundly by the Tigers in early October in Blackford 23-3. Dr. Pepper ACC Championship game, part of Dr. Pepper Championship week on ESPN tonight at 8 Eastern. Excellent field position after the kickoff out of bounds from the 40. Ace McCoy throws to D.J. Monroe. Good blocking on the perimeter. And it helped him get six. The turnover's the big problem for Texas. Turnovers, Sean, and also that play you just watched on that first down was the exact same play they had that he threw it poorly when they could have converted on the third. They had the same blocking, they had the same coverage, but the poor throw did not allow it to happen. Interesting, they went with McCoy as the starter of late because he's been better at protecting the football than David Ash. He's had his best day in terms of production, but he's also given it away more than he has in the past. Hills for a first down across midfield. Let's send you back to the studio and get an update from Robert Flores. All right, Sean, All-America Player of the Week nominee, and it's Southern Miss quarterback. Austin Davis, tremendous today as the Southern Miss Golden Eagles upset the University of Houston Cougars in the Conference USA Championship. 279 yards, four touchdowns, 17 of 33 as Southern Miss spoils Houston's undefeated season. Text vote to 55862 for a chance at a trip to the national title. Sean. Almost certainly prevent the Cougars from going to a BCS Bowl. Here's Cody Johnson on first down. There is a flag down. Holding. Offense number 82. 10 yard penalty. Repeat first down. 12 penalties. That's the season high. The previous most was 10. Well, that's a second hold on Pellman. He had one early in the first quarter, and now he gets one in the third quarter. This is a, this spot right here with this Texas team, this is important because if they don't answer the bell, Baylor could blow this bad boy open. Still a decided edge in time of possession for Texas, nearly three to one. Monroe. And there's Hall again. And I love the fact he has a sister named Holly. Holly Hall. 
softball player at Baylor. In the spirit of the season. Oh, absolutely. She's, she's big around Christmas. <laughs> and a heck of a player, I understand. That's what we're told. Second down, 20. Texas back at its own 41. They haven't lost to Baylor in back-to-back -back years since 1991 and 92. They lose today, it would be two straight. Baylor beat him in Austin last year, 30 to 22. Ash in the game. There's Hall again. And if he keeps playing like this, all Baylor fans are going to have a holly jolly Christmas. Ah, he oh, had. Stop, Sean, please. While we'll you're be here all week. <laughs> Hall reads it perfectly and just comes down quickly. As a safety, most of the time you take your run keys off the offensive tackle. Hall does it nicely there, reads it, and makes the play. One thing about reading it, another thing about making the play. Third now to 19, Case McCoy. Throws on the run, throws it up for grabs, intercepted. Second of the day for K.J. Morton. So Case McCoy thrown more balls to start his career without one getting intercepted than any other Texas quarterback, including his legendary brother, has thrown three here today. Well, Mike Davis goes past him, but did you see how McCoy tries to throw it on the run like that? He had time to set his feet. He doesn't have a big arm, so he needs everything he can. Doesn't get anything on it, and it turns into a pick. It's turning into a nightmare for Case McCoy. Sophomore. Four turnovers, one shy of the five they had in their route at the hands of Oklahoma in the Cotton Bowl. Now a chance to bust it open. Get away into the secondary. And powering out to the 45-yard line. 26-yard run, Emmanuel Acho the tackle. Yeah, let's go back and look at McCoy. He buys some time, now he steps forward, does not set his feet whatsoever. He had the time, he just needs to square his shoulders. Because he doesn't, he underthrows it, and it's a pick. Another 100-yard rushing game for Ganaway. Griffin zings one. Caught for a first down. Tevin Reese, his first catch of the day, 46th of the year. They have five outstanding wide receivers. And they pick up the tempo. Ganaway, a hard-earned couple, wrestled down by Alex Okafor. Shall leading we? rusher in the Big 12, Ganaway now with his fifth 100-yard game of the season. Yeah, we've been talking about, you know, the Heisman candidacy and all that with uh, Robert Griffin III, and it's legitimate because he's a legitimate player. But the biggest point is he's got a lot of guys around him. It's a talented team. Pass broken up by Carrington Bindham. Really had a terrific sophomore season, a cornerback for Texas. It was intended for Lanier. Sampson and with an eye on that Matt we talk a lot about Griffin being a candidate for the Heisman most think it's luck Richardson Griffin right. you know he's had a good day but if you're really looking at a wow voters I don't think he's done that at least not yet today no and then it's gonna it's gonna turn into like right now this this is a big play right here and there it is and, he and made he's it. on target first down down to the 22 it's a Terrence big, Williams, a 19-yard reception. Sorry, Sean. It, it's a big play because they have an opportunity to blow this thing wide open. And he makes it with his feet. You see that? Just a fake. Pulls it back down. Keeps his eyes there again. And can create. More than 10,000 yards passing now for Griffin. Adding to his school record. Boy, Gideon's been a much better tackler here in the second half. He came up and splattered. RG3 near the 18 yard line. One thing about Griffin, you can see that track speed. And he says he's about 15 pounds heavier than when he was running. No, actually, 25 pounds heavier than when he was running track. He's 221 now. He competed in the hurdles his freshman year, finished third in the country at about 195 pounds. Keenan Robinson stops that play for no gain. Over 10,000 yards. Passing, he's over 2,000 yards rushing. 
Only four quarterbacks have ever done that. More than 9,000 yards passing and 2,000 rushing. Griffin along with Dan LaFever of Central Michigan. Colin Kaepernick of Nevada. And a guy named Tim Tebow. You might have heard a little I've bit heard about of that guy. Griffin ripped down by Jackson Jeffcoat. Looked like RG3 might be able to duck under it, but he could not. It's a sack back to the 22-yard line. You can see number 44 come off the edge, and they nobody blocks him. And then he's able to be he's able to pull him down with the one arm. Jackson, just a sophomore, started as a freshman. They weren't too thrilled with him on something. They got after him on the sideline there. Jeffcoat's playing with an injured shoulder. That injury suffered last week at Texas A&M. Here's Aaron Jones, huge field goal now to make it a three-score game. And that one is good. 39-yard field goal. And it's the largest lead of the game for either team. Coming this February to ABC. Don't miss the series premiere of The River. When a famous explorer goes missing on the Amazon River, his family goes on a dangerous search to find him. And executive producer Steven Spielberg. The River premieres Tuesday, February 7th on ABC. Aaron Jones kicks off for Baylor. And a good one. Middle of the end zone, A.J. White thought about it and took an E. Let's go down to the field. Here's Samantha Steele. Yeah, guys, all indications here that David Ash will be the guy from here on out in this game after that last pick. Case McCoy came off the field, got on the phone, then put his helmet down, sat down for a while. Now he's not carrying his helmet around. David Ash got a new towel, found a ball from underneath one of the benches, and now is ready to go. Got up in the face of all of his old linemen and said, guys, time to play your tails off. Well, that's going to have to wait for at least a moment or two. Is it still Case McCoy at quarterback? Under center. And he throws on target. It's a good win for a first down. Out to the 36, gain of 16. And even though McCoy started to turn it over, he's the better thrower of the two. You're probably yeah. going to have to throw the ball now down by 17 with little more than a quarter remaining. Yeah, I, I, I agree with that, Sean. And, you know, at halftime, when you asked me about this Texas team, what they had to be able to do in the second half, I said consistency. And, and that's what we were talking about with the young quarterback, McCoy. And he's got to be more consistent in his decisions and then also in his throws. D.J. Monroe, the tailback, following the fullback, Johnson. Out to the 39 for a gain of three. It'll be second and seven. Nicholas Jean-Baptiste, Mike Hicks made the tackle. And here's the day for Case McCoy. Pretty solid in the first half, although had the very costly interception he threw late in the half. But two interceptions here in the second. And as you said, really doesn't have that big down the field arm. No, no, he doesn't. He needs help. He needs help from everybody else around him for him to be able to perform at his peak. And would you agree if the quarterback play had been better at Texas this year? And that one was almost yes. picked off. A bit of a floater and broken up by Joe Williams. They're seven and four. Yes. Some close losses. Quarterback play a little bit better. They might have eight or nine wins instead of seven. Yeah, this is a perfect example. Watch Joe Williams. Now he's this is he's eyeballing this the whole way. He's waiting for the ball to get there. Shipley, you need that ball's got to be there on a rope. Because it isn't, Williams can play literally split the difference between two receivers and still make a play on it. Likely to be the final play of the third quarter. Third down and seven. They need to convert, and they do. On a catch by Marquise Goodwin to the 48-yard line. In that time, he set his feet and was right where it had to be. Third quarter dominated by Baylor. They led by three at halftime. They lead by 17 as we go to the fourth in Waco.
final regular season game for Baylor in Texas. And the Bears lead 41 24. Texas ball, first and 10. At the Baylor 49 yard line with Case McCoy, the quarterback. Horns trying to avoid losing their seventh in a row to a top 25 team. Jeremy Hills jumps over, would be tackled. Got a couple to the 47. Texas Longhorns, that's an amazing statistic. Last year there were two and six in the Big 12 in a miserable year for Mac Brown and the Horns. They're four and four in conference play entering this one. If they end at four and five, it'd be the first time they've had back-to-back -back losing seasons in conference play since it happened four years in a row in the late 30s. Baylor with so many milestones still to achieve, including the first nine-win season since 1986. Johnson down to the 42, trying to beat Texas in back-to-back -back years for the first time since 91 and 92. They're trying to have their first five-game winning streak since they started 1991, 5-0. They've won four in a row coming in. Sean, you can't say enough about the job that Art Bryles has done in his recruiting, in, in the way he runs his offense. Just the whole, this whole thing has gotten bigger and better every year he's been there, and I, I, I believe it's going to continue to be that way. It'll still trend. McCoy on the rollout converts another third now to Jackson Shipley. When Art Browse came here from the University of Houston, they'd had 12 consecutive losing seasons, and he had to convince top players like Robert Griffin III, who had committed to Houston and then changed his mind and came with Bryles to Baylor. He had to commit those guys to be a part of the change, to believe and have faith. When Ahmad Dixon, the highest ranked recruit they've had here in decades, signed on, they'd had 14 losing seasons in a row after they were 4-8 and eight in each of Bryles' first two years. But they've gotten to the point now where, you know, not only is it faith, now the, the recruits they're going after now know that it's been done. Yeah, and they can just make it there. better. There's substance there. There's bowls. You know, there's there's a couple of pelts up there that you can look at and say, hey, this, this is pretty good. They got a new stadium coming. They got things rolling down here at Baylor. And it and to me, it's all because of Art Browse. He's done a fantastic job. Very, very good coach. Former high school coach here in the state of Texas. And a terrific person as well, in addition to his obvious coaching talents. Deep throw! And it is intended for Goodwin incomplete. David Ash threw it to the back of the end zone, and Goodwin could not come up with it. Right where it had to be. The throw is there. Goodwin beats Hall, not even close. Falls oh right in his chest. You cannot, you got to make that catch. 13 minutes to go. That catch and an extra point would have had them within 10. Now they have to convert a third and three. They are in field goal range, but down by 17. They need more than that. And they'll pick up the first down. Cody Johnson refusing to go down. And they're going to give him all that. Down to the 16-yard line. Forward progress apparently was never stopped prior to that additional surge nine yards and all you know quietly Cody Johnson's had a pretty darn good football game and the one thing that kind of surprised me a little bit was in the third quarter after they make the big throw that they didn't go back to that same recipe that had been working for them in the first half and the main recipe and main ingredient recipe was Cody Johnson Jeremy Hills Got a yard to the 15 before he was driven back. And you see the impact of that drop, drop ball, Matt. 13 minutes when it was dropped by Goodwin. And even if they punch it in and get seven here, the Longhorns will have used a lot more time than they should have needed. Goodwin's played himself a pretty good game, but he's going to kick himself for making that drop. Obviously, it's not something that he wanted to do, but that's about concentration at that point. They haven't been great scoring touchdowns in the red zone. Here's Jackson Shipley taking the snap. Then the inside handoff to D.J. Monroe. And he slices down to the 80-yard short of the first down. 
KJ Morton made the tackles. They lined up the wide receiver Shipley in the shotgun. He gave it to Hills, who gave it to Monroe. And Cody Johnson helping the case there with a block. And so a big third down, and Sean, I've got to think that this got to be four down here when you're down by this much. Well, they are three scores down. They also might want to be a little more quick to the line of scrimmage and quick to get it snapped. Play clock down to nine. And Johnson did not get there and lost the football. Baylor has recovered. Dixon came up with the fumble. There are flags on the field. The ruling on the field is a fumble recovered by Baylor. First down. Ahmad Dixon, who committed to Mac Brown and the Texas Longhorns while he was in high school, committed to them verbally for about a year, then changed his mind, stayed home in Waco to help with this turnaround. Terrence Lloyd helped rip it out, and Joe Williams did as well. I don't know. His knee may have been down there, Sean. Mm -hmm. They'll certainly take a look at it in the replay booth. He still has possession there, and, the and his knees, knees are down. down. Yeah, yeah, that will probably be overturned. Now, there was a flag after the knee was down. He has control. Yeah, his there, knees are knees down. Knees are down. Yeah, that's, that's going to be right there. Spot it right there. Lloyd made the tackle, and then the ball comes out after the knee's down. Would have been the fifth turnover for Texas. It still might be if the replay booth didn't see it the way we did. It looked like both knees were on the ground. He still had the ball. By the way, there's been a rumor going around that Mac Brown was going to announce his retirement after this game. We got it from a reliable source, the <laughs> bus driver at National yeah. Car Rental. <laughs> the yeah. Dallas Fort Worth Airport. Yes, sir. Nothing gets by us. No, oh. oh, sir. And Mac said he had heard that rumor, but there's absolutely nothing to it. He's energized by the coaching staff changes. He likes the direction they're heading. He thinks with another good recruiting class coming in, great class next year, that they might be about another year away from getting right back into the situation they were in for a while, a perennial national championship contender. Well, he's young, Sean. He is. His Sixty, team, rather. Which is young. Yeah, and, and he, he physically is young. His team is young, particularly that offensive line. He's got a lot of young guys playing defensively. So you could see that in the next couple years, they're going to make big steps because their young players are playing pretty well. You know, I wonder what the Hurts guy would have said if we'd have gone to him. We could have gotten a better scoop, perhaps. You never know. But Max said absolutely nothing to it. He's even communicated with the parents of the players that he's not leaving. Of course, on the other side with an eye toward the future, they're wondering, might Robert Griffin come back? He does have another year of eligibility. Here's one more look. Look to us like he's down with the ball still in his arm. After further review, the ruling on the field stands. Whoa! You know, Sean, that's, that last look there, run that, uh, hey, guys, run that back one more time. It looked like it may have been coming, starting to come out as his knee hit. I just noticed that at the end. Watch the knees. The right knees down there. There. See, the ball yeah, was starting to come uh, out. Just started to come out. That's a, that's a big deal well, right why there. Why did you say that the first 12 times we watched Because uh, I didn't see it. <laughs> you let me stick with a lousy opinion. <laughs> yeah. Replay after replay after replay. I got it from the National Car Rental guy. There you go. 11 minutes to go. The ball in a 17-point lead with Baylor and Ganaway. It's swung down by Keenan Robinson. Let's look at today's impact players brought to you by Chick-fil-A. Robert Griffin III passed for 251, rushed for a couple. Fifth 100-yard rushing day for Terrence Gannaway, who set their single season rushing mark today. Kendall Wright, six catches for 166 and a 59-yard touchdown on the second play of the game. Those are typically the impact players on offense for Baylor. 
Ganaway dropped for a one yard loss by Jordan Hicks and A.J. White. Ganaway's had himself not only a good game, obviously a great season. He's had a great season. He's gotten better as the year has gone on. He also catches the ball pretty well out of the backfield. Pretty versatile and a big man. Senior, 240 pounder out of DeKalb, Texas. Started his career at the University of Houston. His mom died. He was distraught. Dropped out of the University of Houston, went home for a year, then went to junior college, and then came here to Baylor. On the crossing, it's Terrence Williams to the 38-yard line. Ganaway realized with the encouragement of friends that his mom wouldn't want him to sit around and mope, get back to the business of getting an education and playing football. How do you size him up as an NFL prospect? Yeah, he's got it. He's got what it takes because he can be physical inside. He has, a, he has enough speed to be able to get to the edge, but he's an inside guy. You, what you want to see him next is his, in his protections because at the next level, every back has to be able to protect. Crowd chanting RG3 now. Ganaway gets two more. Emmanuel Acho took him down. Here's a look at the day for Ganaway, including an early 20-yard touchdown run that made it 14 to nothing. The thing that I like about him is his feet in the hole. And what does that mean? There's a point of patience for every running back. And when you get it, you have to be able to move your feet to get to the next level, and he does it well. Irvin throws. Wright tried to catch it with one hand. Kenny Vaccaro made the tackle. And so, Sean, I guess the point that we've we've tried to make here, and I, hopefully I can sum it up the best, is it's not this offense is not just about Robert Griffin III. You have Kendall Wright, who's a playmaker. You have Terrence Ganaway who can make plays. You have Sampson on the outside who can make plays. Salubi comes in, and he does some good things. So there's a lot of good players on this team offensively that contribute to the big picture. Now, Manny Diaz, the coordinator for Texas, said their receiving group looks like a 4 by 100 relay team. Here's one of them, Lanier Sampson. Coaches call him granddaddy. He's the grizzled veteran, provides a lot of leadership in the locker room. 19 yard completion to Sampson. And another first down. And another crossing route. And remember, crossing routes take a long time to develop, which means your offensive line is doing a nice job of protecting. And it hasn't been a huge yardage day for Baylor. They've really taken advantage of the turnovers. Yes. For some short fields. They've averaged 8.6 yards per play. They've hit a couple of home run balls. But it's a team that's averaging 577 yards per game. They're going to come up well short of that today. Ganaway to the 39 for pickup of two. Tomorrow night on ABC, don't miss an all new episode of Once Upon a Time. Every legendary hero has to start somewhere, whether it's slaying dragons or fighting for their one true love. Experience the real story of Prince Charming Once Upon a Time tomorrow at 8. 7 Central on ABC. And even though they like the up-tempo, Robert Griffin III winding the play clock down wisely with a 17-point lead. And they blitz him. And they'll get there. And he's going deep for another touchdown to Terrence Williams. Same corner. He visited against Oklahoma to win it. He's going to have Condry Diggs in man coverage down below, right here. And so it's a nine route, and the nine route is just straight down the field. And what is it? It's about speed. Samson gets it on top. I'm mean Williams, rather, and it's perfectly thrown. Six quick. T. Williams with another one. After the fumble, they go 88 yards in eight plays. Every other touchdown drive had been a minute and a half or less. They wanted to run the clock down that time, so it wasn't quite as quick. 39 yards, Griffin to Williams. Is he making a Heisman statement today? Here's a look at today's Pacific Life game summary. Midway through the fourth quarter, Baylor pulling away. 
Their last five possessions, four touchdowns and a field goal. Griffin up to 339 total yards. Janaway 134 yards rushing. And Texas has killed itself with five turnovers today and 12 penalties. You're not going to beat an excellent team like Baylor when you do that. Baylor has gotten better as the season's gone on, and that's good to see. That's good coaching. They're a very good team. DJ Monroe brings back the Aaron Jones kickoff. Midway through the fourth quarter, 48 24, Baylor. This game was tied at 24. Three straight Texas turnovers, and Robert Griffin and Baylor pulled away, leading 48 24. He's thrown for 320 and rushed for two touchdowns. Owns 46 records at Baylor. Single game, single season, or career marks. McCoy throws low, intended for Mike Davis. Here's Robert Flores back in the studio with another update. Hey, Sean, LSU has 33 yards of offense, but they now have the lead in the SEC title game. Kenny Hilliard makes it 14 to 10 LSU in the third quarter. Should LSU stumble, Oklahoma State would like to take advantage. But coming up tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern, they take on Oklahoma on ABC. Cowboys have lost eight straight in the game that they call Bedlam. They're favored to win tonight. Jeremy Hills takes the pass out to the 34, which, by the way, this is the first time in the last 17 meetings that Baylor was favored to beat Texas. And over the years, Mac Brown not only has come to Waco and won, but his Longhorns have hammered the Baylor Bears. But it is a new day in the Baylor football program. McCoy throws wide open receiver is Shipley across midfield. Sam Hall made the tackle. Well, let's take a look at the Heismanology poll results. All the people at ESPN who have a Heisman ballot participate every week. Joe Test tour leading the charge, and it's Trent Richardson very narrowly over Andrew Luck, and then RG3. McCoy short again, out of bounds, goes DJ Grant. And there are other dependable polls. Chris Fowler showed you some of them on game day this morning that have those top three in different orders, mm -hmm. but generally it's those three with a little bit of a gap down to Barkley and Keenum. Keenum didn't help himself today when Houston Law. I think the dark horse there is Barkley. I think he's had a fantastic year. When you watch him on tape, he does a lot of things really well. Right here, Robert Griffin the third. You can't ignore what he's done. He's just, he has played at a high, high level. But having said that, he has more help than does Andrew Luck. When I watch him, Sean, we watched him, we had the, we had the pleasure of watching him perform earlier in the season. When you watch that offense, you watch the receivers it, do not dazzle you. I mean, yeah, they don't have any. I mean, it's a tight end based offense and they have a solid runner. But really, that's a running offense. That's what they are. And then, oh, then here comes Andrew Luck who can make some plays. And so when I watch this Baylor team, not to take anything away from Robert Griffin III, a fantastic player, but he's got a lot of help outside, which we've documented today. Yeah, as you were saying, you give Andrew Luck this receiving core, the wide receivers, and you wonder. McCoy on third and five, another first down to Mike Davis. He gets banged down at the 35-yard line by K.J. Morton. Well, I don't believe you have a vote. I don't want to misspeak, but I think no. I would know if you were a Heisman voter. No, I'm not a Heisman if voter. If you did, who would you vote for? I'd, I'd take Andrew Luck. Mm -hmm. I, and then, again, that's not to disparage any of the players who are playing out there because, hey, there's some fantastic things going on out there. This guy here, RG3, had a great year. But when you look at them all, especially on tape, and you see what they bring to the table and what they have to work with around them, and then you see how well they play. Then to me, it's Andrew Luck. And you're supposed to go to the best player in college football. And I think ultimately that's the judgment you have to make. It just can't be who had the most impressive stats. And I think all those guys we saw on the screen, and there are others. 
As the pass oh, yeah. is caught by Miles Onye Boule for a first down. Russell Wilson in another year would be right Boy. there at the top of the conference. Monty Ball, his teammate, Jeez. would be there. But Michael James. Yeah, there have been, but well, we were really impressed with the Wisconsin team last week. And Russell Wilson and Monty Ball, boy, they are really terrific. McCoy throws. Again, just not enough on the ball. Broken up by Joe Williams. Well, I would agree with you. I think if it goes to the best player, it'll be Andrew Luck. And I would agree with almost everybody who I've heard evaluate him with an eye toward the future. Andrew Luck is going to be a Peyton Manning type star quarterback in the NFL for a long time. Sean, you and I, when we first watched the tape, I mean, my first impression was the same as Phil Simms when, when he watched him from afar. You don't really see all the throws that, are, that he can make until you study him and you realize that he's one of the few guys that I have seen who can vary the velocity on the throws he makes. McCoy gets buried by Gary Mason Jr. Phil Bennett told him if you want to play you need to make some plays and he made a nice one there for the defensive coordinator. Well it's going to be a very happy birthday for Phil Bennett and Art Bryles. That's what they wanted for a present and they're going to get it. Third down and 17. Only a three man rush. Shipley got walloped and lost the ball. And they're going to rule him down, I believe, at the 13. Yes, they are. That would have been turnover number six. Now this uh, this Texas team, boy, they today they have they've gotten beaten by a by a better team. Ooh, but they've boy. also beaten themselves. That looks like a fumble to me. Also it was a shot in the head. Sam Hall 25 getting in there as well as Ahmad Dixon who's played a really good game today. Dixon's played well as has uh, as has Hall. We're going to review it. I'm surprised they didn't throw a flag on that. Yeah. For Dixon. And the timeout has been called by Texas. Apparently they are not reviewing it. 4.15 to go here in Waco. John McDonough, Matt Millen, Samantha Steele back in Waco, Texas. Baylor seemingly on its way to beating Texas for the second year in a row. Fourth and five for the Longhorns. At the Baylor 13. The fake by McCoy. Throws it up for grabs. Intercepted again by Hall. Case McCoy is Oh, Sam Hall's had himself a really good game. You're going to see him sitting up top. You're a safety. So what does that mean? That means you let nothing get behind you and you stay on top of all the coverages. And then you read the quarterback's eyes, which he did. That was picture perfect right there. And then happy birthday to <laughs> you. Happy birthday to you. Flag down. Taunting number 25 of the intercepting team. At the distance to the goal, Baylor keeps the ball, first down. Last four possessions, four turnovers, three interceptions and a lost fumble. Season high, six turnovers for Texas. And Phil Bennett said, hey, we're going to give up some big plays. The defense is still a work in progress. The next step is to get the same kind of athletes on the defensive side of the ball that they have on offense. But We've been doing better at getting takeaways. That's what we need to do. And that's what they went out and did today. That changed the game in the second half. And you know, Sean, this performance and this season will go a long way to Art Bryles and Phil Bennett and Phil Montgomery to their recruiting classes. And they're going to just continue to get better and better. They'll get, they'll get better recruits Whoa. every year. RG3 throwing a block on Jordan Hicks as Adrian Phillips made the tackle. On Terrence Ganaway. Well, if he's looking for one extra style point from the Heisman voters, I can block too. <laughs> I got to tell you, and I, I said this earlier in the telecast, and I'm going to say it again. Rarely do you see track guys, and I don't want to kill them, okay? But rarely do you see track guys who have real good toughness. And usually, you know, they kind of back mm -hmm. off a little thing. This kid here, he's a football player who happened to run track. 
Well, that guys say rarely do you see football players like Matt Millen who can run fast. Yeah, er, well, they would be right. Enough. <laughs> Crowd wanted a horse collar on that last play. Griffin runs a little more stat padding here in the final moments. More importantly, it's a first down for Baylor. Bedlam tonight. We've been looking forward to it all season long. LSU still in a dogfight with Georgia today, hoping are the Cowboys for a Bulldog win. Perhaps open the path to the BCS championship game. 106th meeting. Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, two schools separated by only 85 miles tonight. We will look forward to watching that one. That'll be a good one. A lot of offense. The team who plays the best defense will win. Van away. Ahead for a two yard gain. Tonight at 8 Eastern time, Oklahoma State, just that one loss, but it was so costly at Iowa State on the Friday night a few weeks back. You know, Sean, the interesting thing with, with uh, Oklahoma, Oklahoma defensively, they have, they have enough people, and they have the people, to be able to perform at a high level. But what's really hurt them has been themselves. They have made mental mistakes. They've blown coverages. They've not been on the same page. So if they can take care of that and they can handle, they'll, they'll, that's going to be a heck of a game because that defense is capable of, of slowing down Oklahoma State. And they had national championship aspirations starting the year. Dan away a short gain. Here's Robert Flores. All right, John LSU seizing control of the SEC title game. Kenny Hilliard's second touchdown run of the half. And despite having just 55 yards of total offense. LSU leading 21 to 10 over Georgia. That's 55 yards of total offense. Unbelievable. And if they play Alabama again, as most people think they will now in the national championship game, you know, it likely be another one of those nine to six games. Yeah, it will because both those teams play very good defense, but Georgia must be playing really well right now defensively. Danaway converts on third and five. Well, we'll find out soon enough tomorrow night on ESPN. Join our distinguished group, Reese Davis, Kirk Herbstreit, Craig James for the All-State BCS Selection Show. They'll unveil the final BCS standings, let you know who'll be facing off in the All-State BCS Championship game. And then at 9 Eastern, the matchup for all bowl games will be revealed in the College Football Bowl Selection Special presented by Chevrolet. All-State BCS Selection Show at 8.15. The Bowl Selection Special at 9. Tomorrow night, right here on ESPN. Rather, over on ESPN. We're on ABC today. Sean, do you think Robert Griffin III comes back? Didn't sound like it talking to him yesterday. He might. All right, Bryles continues to tell him every time he sees him, I'm looking at my quarterback for next year. <laughs> I would, too. Let's take a look at the good hands play of the game and brought to you by Allstate. It was a beauty. Originally ruled incomplete, but on review, a touchdown catch by Blaine Irby. Should be the Allstate good hand. Since we're the correct, one hander. Yes, thank you. We were in good hand with Allstate there. <laughs> well, they're in the victory formation. So Baylor. Completes just their third perfect home season. 7 0 here, 9 and 3, 10 the regular season. First nine win season since 1986. If they win their ball game, they'll match the school record for wins in a season. 352 total yards for RG3, 320 of them passing, 32 rushing, threw for two, ran for two. The question is was it enough? It is last chance to dazzle the Heisman voters, the ballot.